Hey. Well, we'll get to give everybody a chance here yeah, because we you know it's popping in here. We'll give everybody a chance and see if anybody pops in because yeah. you know screw tube. We got uh, Phil too has cool. A delay, yeah. Phil yeah. too cool. K Munin, of K course. K Munin is here. Hey, K Munin. My flock. They may not can see us yet. Yeah. Because you true. know there is a delay with uh, YouTube with how they operate yeah they, put, they, they like to run ads over everything and then people got to wait for an opportunity to click that ad off but for the benefit of those who are going to watch the rebroadcast yeah they can see us prattle on yeah we'll say <laughs> hey to everyone that's, that's the way it goes and here everybody comes and again yeah. of course uh hello to uh my flock and kane unit and uh phil too cool and everybody else mm -hmm. whether you've chimed in yet or not of course this is Open by chance, it's David and the lovely Miss Lady Pop Hunter here, LPH, in Open by Chance. So we have a guest tonight, and we'll get to that in a moment. That is uh, chance, chance, obviously. And Chance, you can find on the the Nostalgic Pod Blast or at the Nostalgic Pod Blast on YouTube, YouTube. as well as FistfulOfRadio.com, where he podcasts out of Atlanta, nostalgic genre. Mm -hmm. on the weekends yeah and he is a uh, a local actor in the atlanta area yeah he's been on a couple of episodes of the walking dead he's a mm -hmm. walker we yeah, have one of the posters um from from the show yes uh, him dressed up as one as of the walkers walker. didn't you say you were the guy in the um the revolving door no yes no it's actually the revolving door? he was in okay, the revolving okay. door i can't remember what season that was but that's when the guy <laughs> was they were in the shopping mall or the store or whatever mm -hmm. and he left everybody and they were trapped in the revolving door okay yeah i can't remember what season that was after the the prison it I all think. kind of blurs together yeah after, after a while, a while it does show, kind of the <laughs> show got really freaking weird but uh it's <laughs> it, it, it did get it got, weird. It got weird. Yeah, it, after Rick <laughs> left, it, it did get well, weird. Well, yeah, you, let, I got an idea. Let's take the star of the show and get rid of him. No, brilliant. Well, he said he wanted I, a break. Yeah, the well, actor, he wanted a break. He had some small that. kids and everything. And, and he wanted to be home with the kids. And we're talking about everything else. I know, everything but else but Chance. Chance can go ahead and perhaps to the audience tell, if I haven't already, yeah. introduce, introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. And we'll make you be. Tell us about who you are. Well, as you said, I'm Chance Bartels of the Nostalgic Pod Blast, which is a show about nostalgia. Oh, oh wait a minute. One. Hold on a minute. I was trying to make you be. That's the wrong one. I did the wrong thing. I'm sorry. We're going to just leave it right here. <laughs> okay, that's fine. You don't need to see me. My face is big enough. It's all good. Okay. But, um, no, I mean, I've always been into comic books and things. Uh, I'm a big Marvel comic book collector. Uh, I know you all are both comic book people. And yeah. you're all things pop culture. So we're like kind of like brothers and sisters in that regard. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I did some, some acting on The Walking Dead. Got shot by Merle in uh, season one, episode Ouch. two, Guts, uh, <laughs> solo in his scope. Uh, and he was on some uh, some drug. We're not told what. We see a vial of some substance and he's just mowing down zombies. And I'm one of the ones that he killed. But um, mainly my show is just about the things that we care about. Uh, yeah. A lot of things from the past, but also present, present movies and stuff like that. But, um, you know. The Nostalgic Pod Blast on uh, YouTube and Apple and everywhere. Just Google the Nostalgic Pod Blast. And uh, it's a professionally produced show. I come from a background, Cumulus Media. Okay. And uh, and I'm glad we met. Uh, I met you at, a, at the uh, yeah. Marietta Records show. And nice people. <laughs> I've always loved your channel, too. Oh, thank well, you. Well, we appreciate that. Thank we you we so try. Much. We just like to, like yourself, obviously, you know, we enjoy the hobbies and we just want to uh, share it with like minded people and just share the love as it were enjoy it and of course we do the toys and the and the comics and vinyl records and vintage tv or whatever yeah whatever brings you back and uh, brings you to a simpler time because the world is really really complicated and you know actually it's not the world the world and life it's not that bad 
but there are people in it that make it complicated <laughs> and we try not to bring that in here you know a little bit of a safe space uh, Super, yeah. superman has his uh fortress, ha, of, fortress solitude. of solitude and everybody should have that even if it's a closet yeah. i see people's collections and it's like all i have is a walk-in closet good yeah you know <laughs> you got something. shut the door behind you <laughs> What I like about your shows is like, if you can't make it to a convention, you feel like you're there. If you watch yeah. your wraparound video, cause you shoot video there. And then when I love you show what the best part is when you show off what you found at each convention, yeah. when you flash forward from the convention to your home, I love mm -hmm. that. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. We try to expand on the, on those uh, video tours as much as possible because, you know, we watch the video tours is like, Oh, this will be really interesting. And it's like, four minutes long like the uh the one that got us was the lunchbox uh, museum oh. you know the lunchbox museum in georgia and we looked for it and every video we found uh we didn't find anything longer than eight minutes yeah and, and we saw the one from um cbs this morning they went out there and they blew through it i think you yeah it was yeah. probably like 10 minutes long yeah and i was yeah. like well god you know we went down there i think our film's like an hour because there's like <laughs> 10,000 lunch boxes in there. <laughs> yeah, just try to share as much of it as you can as we can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, no, I did that. I did that. I wanted to show you some of my stuff. There's some of my comic book boxes, long boxes and uh oh, that's kind of in a nutshell what I'm all about. Classic Star yeah. Trek, I collect toys, yeah. comics, record albums, just like you folks. You find people it open by chance. <laughs> But well, we try. Yeah. But um, on the focus of tonight. Yeah, tonight we got a conversation. Because Chance, who ha has been a comic, when, when did you start with comics? Oh, back in 1982. April of 82 is mm -hmm. when I started collecting each and every month. The Marvel title specifically. Yeah. Okay. Which always seemed to have been uh, more popular because when Marvel started to realize that that little um stamp of approval didn't mean as much they started going in a different direction than dc dc didn't start catching up till vertigo titles mm. but uh because they stayed kind of silly mm -hmm. uh, quite frankly and more, more for a younger audience i suppose so more people were into the marvel and i get that but um you were so invested with it evidently you tried out for a contest Yes, this one. Ah, I should have had it ready. Well, it was the Marvel tryout book. Yes. An oversized book. You could audition, basically, to be hired by Marvel to be a go. pencil, an inker, a colorist, a writer, whatever your expertise was. Look at that. Marvel wants you. And before that, I had a letter published an incredible hulk issue number 296 yeah right here uh, my mom framed that when i was a little kid i mean I'm, i was 12 years old i think and, I, have uh, a deal. I have a copy of that letter here lined up oh, cool so. cool so yeah I, I really wanted to get involved in the sure. creative process and uh sure my folks got me a draft table like an architect and uh i took art lessons and uh, was really invested into the creative process. And uh, there was a great book uh, called How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way uh -huh. by John Buscema and Stan Lee. Featured a lot of John Buscema's artwork. It was a great resource for someone that's trying to self-teach themselves how to draw comics the way they're depicted in Marvel books. Sure. So uh, yeah, um, and one of the things I really liked was the official handbook to the Marvel Universe and that was a limited series at first alphabetical and it would have a, a full page shot of a marvel character and it would have all sorts of details like what their powers were what their first appearance was and this was before the internet so it was just a go-to series ah oh, there's my letter right there yeah, there it is my old address yep <laughs> <laughs> Mary Ada, georgia 4983 odin's way and the side street was Thor's Rock. So whoever created hey. that name in 1977, <laughs> they must have been into Norse mythology or Thor. Possibly. 
but I'll, I'll leave that up for a moment well, in case anybody wants to to read that. And that was uh, that's your letter that they published. And what that's right. what, what year was this? That would have been in. I'll tell you the exact date. Nineteen eighty. Let me hang on. I have my notes here. It was published. All right, they hit comic shops on Tuesday, March thirteenth, nineteen eighty four. Uh huh. And that was the street date, and of course, the the date on the cover was always three months ahead for circulation purposes. And that that's the issue. That's your issue. Yes, sir. That's the issue. My my letter was published in. Uh, I was a the, big UFOs fan. I was talking about the UFOs who were introduced in Incredible Hulk issue number 254. I have a 9.8 CGC copy of that book right here. I've got a bunch of these, like 9.6s that are CGC. I just love the UFOs. It's not worth much, but I just love these characters. They're like the anti-Fantastic Four. There you go. Pull, that, pull him up here real quick. There you go. There's a 9.8. And okay. I think these characters are going to become a thing eventually mm -hmm. in the MCU. Uh -huh. And if they don't, then someone's asleep at the switch because it's just a shoe and they could have like a Superman two type deal in a future fantastic four movie, you know, the same powers as Superman, the same powers as the fantastic four or similar powers. I like how instead of the invisible girl, you had vapor and uh -huh. they're, they're evil. And, and the, the funny thing is I can totally see them doing this because, uh, Simon, the head of the UFOs, was like this industrialist who was trying to do better than NASA with space shuttle flights. And the thing is, they wanted power. He wanted it for the wrong reasons. He wanted to get infected or uh, radiated by the cosmic rays that transformed the Fantastic Four to gain power, mm -hmm. not to be a hero. And so, you know, it, it could be like an Elon Musk analogy. I, look, I'm not saying I'm pro or against Elon. I'm just saying there's a lot of people that are against him. I don't know why. So uh -huh. it'd be a shoe in to do an analogy of Elon. Anyway, I don't know. I digress. <laughs> well, if you read it, the guy is like an Elon Musk, the head of the UFOs. Anyway. Okay. So. Interesting. So, so I love the UFOs. So I wrote a letter about the UFOs. I was saying they needs to be a UFOs limited series. Marvel, could you do that? Because I was responding to um, issue 293. And at that time, the Incredible Hulk was controlled by Bruce Banner's intelligence, which is something they've done in the MCU eventually. You know, he was in charge, but he was starting to lose control. And so I could totally predict, even as like a 12 and 13 year old, that the Hulk was going to lose control again mm -hmm. by issue 300. That's exactly what happened. And the beast took over. The Incredible Hulk persona took over. Ah. Now, what's the significance here? Inside that book is an ad that encourages people like me to submit ideas for characters and they claim you will be treated just like a Marvel employee, the same compensation as a Marvel employee. And uh, golly, I think I have it in the background. I don't know if you have the image of the ad that's inside of that book. Let me see here. Is that it? That's it. That's it. Kind of looks like you there. Here, <laughs> Spider-Man's handing, uh, handing Chance an opportunity. <laughs> Sitting there with his bubblegum machine. No, actually, that's supposed to be Jim Shooter, but. <laughs> Whom I met not too long ago back in, uh, I think, August of 2021 in Chattanooga, Tennessee at a convention. And we talked about it. He says, I told my guys not to do this. I have on tape. I talk with him uh, in a Q&A about how, well, we'll get to it. An idea of mine, a character of mine was basically stolen by someone at Marvel. Mark Gruenwald was credited as creating the character that I submitted. And Mark Gruenwald sadly died in 1996, by the way. Uh -huh. And Paul Neary drew the artwork of my character, but it was the same colors, the same powers, the same everything. The only thing they changed was the name of the character. Oh, okay. And it says, uh, win a job at Marvel Comics. Writing, penciling, inking, lettering or coloring a special issue of the amazing spider-man mm -hmm. all you have to do is read a copy of the official marvel comics tryout book complete the section that spotlights your special talent and of course there well, let me back up there's the tryout book again mm -hmm. beautiful yeah which i guess you ordered 
Definitely. Uh, that's not the actual copy. Uh, that's yeah. at my uh, parents' house in storage, but that's one I got after the fact. But that is the book. Yes, that is the book that and, they were they were shilling back then. And for, for 1983, that ain't cheap. No. A dollar twenty-five. Twelve ninety-five. Oh, twelve. Oh, okay, okay. That's like a modern comic. Mm. <laughs> wow. Modern comic costs yeah. twelve dollars. <laughs> yeah, well, it feels like it. Mm -hmm. Some of them are up there, like nine ninety-nine and yeah. such. It's crazy. So you 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 had to buy this. Yes, you did. If you wanted to enter, the, well, you could have submitted ideas and artwork, even if you didn't. But they encourage you to buy that book because there's pages that needed to be completed in that book. I see. I see. So you uh, you got the uh, thing. Now what's mm -hmm. this? Oh, Marvel. That Universe. is the official handbook to the Marvel Universe I referenced earlier. Okay. Because the reason this is significant is when I submitted my idea, I did it in this style. That image of Spider Man you just showed. That's yeah. an example of what. Are you guys familiar with the official handbook to the Marvel Universe? Uh, yeah, not. I've I've seen it. Okay, this is how I submitted my idea, and. I drew a full page drawing of my character, full color. And like then that. to the right, I had typed out, uh, I'd written out and typed out what the character can do. And I called my character happy. He was a demented, happy face. Okay. He had a yellow face and he had like a yellow and purple costume. And what he could do is he could drive people insane by staring at them. Okay. And uh, my friend, Danny Cochran, uh, he thought it was a dumb idea, but in retrospect, as an adult, he says that was actually pretty brilliant because who would think of a character could drive someone crazy. That's the worst thing that could happen to somebody to mm -hmm. lose their sanity. Uh -huh. And, uh, and what was interesting is now they changed the name to madcap uh, and see. the character first appeared. I don't want to steal your thunder. I know I sent you uh, an image of, uh, the captain American issue that first introduced madcap. There it is. Yep. Issue 307. 307. Correct. And, um, you know, I remember getting that at the comic shop and thumbing through it. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's my character. At first, I was excited. I was like, oh, my God, there it is. And I thought they'd honor their promise. They said that full credit would be given to anyone that submits an idea that we like and that we publish and that we use. That wasn't the case with me. And uh, like I said, at the time, you know, I submitted it when I was 13. I was a minor. Uh, they had already published my letter, so I had, in good faith, uh, mailed things to Marvel, thinking this is all up and up. And, um, you know, I, I submitted that full-page, full-color artwork of Happy. Mm -hmm. um, and all he had to do was stare at someone to drive him crazy. I know I'm repeating myself. but uh, And a lot yeah. of my friends and family witnessed me creating this before I sent it in. And I have a copy of my artwork uh, from back then. And you know what? I'm not the suing kind. You know, a lot of friends have said, listen, you know, stop talking about it unless you get an attorney. And I did talk with a copyright attorney some yeah. years ago, um, about five years ago or so. And I was informed that there is a statute of limitations. But since I was a minor at the time, he thinks this could be revisited. And that's a loophole to get this into court. If it Okay. So you do to. have you do have hard copy. Yes, I don't have the. I'm not, I don't have the actual. I wish I'd made a photocopy. There were photocopy machines back in 1984. I wish I'd made a copy of the actual submission. But I have artwork from back then of my creation, and I have witnesses: uh, Jeff Logan, Danny Cochran, um, Scott Holcomb, who I'm not in contact with anymore. Um, but Danny, we've done a video before uh, on my YouTube channel, Chance Acting Demo, mm -hmm. and I think I put it on the Nostalgic Pod Blast as well where he talked about it, um, you know, he's very passionate. He's more fired up about this than I am. Now, when that comic book came out, Captain America 307, we showed my parents and the attitude of my mom in particular was you should be flattered. You know, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And, uh, and Danny, my friend was like, this is bull crap. You know, he, there was no mention, there's no article, there's no paragraph. No, nothing. You know, they, they took this from Chance Wholesale and just changed the name. And they put a hat on him. Haven't mentioned that yet. They changed the name from Happy to Madcap, and they put a little hat on him. But here's the sneaky thing, guys. Um, in the beginning, when he was introduced in Captain America 307, he needed a gun to drive someone insane. 
Okay. Then when he returned, just two issues later in Captain America 309, and I think I may have sent you artwork panel of this we can show later in the show, mm -hmm. um, it was established in a very dramatic moment in Captain America issue 309 where this the gun is broken, and the victim of uh, Madcap says, oh, you can't hurt me, your gun's broken. And then he says, oh, the gun? I don't need the gun. So they slowly used everything that I'd submitted to them about what Madcap can do, or Happy as I called him, and then snuck uh -huh. it in in his second appearance, the fact that he just looks at someone can drive him crazy. Which mm -hmm. is what's happening in this panel. Yeah. I, I imagine. That's, it. that's yeah. it. That's it. And anyone that's watching on a television on your fine YouTube channel, Open by Chance Toys, you can probably read the dialogue. Uh, it might be small yeah. if you're watching on a phone, but that's what I'm describing. Um, yeah, and he looked exact. It was a full page drawing, full color art. Uh, and look, and he lost the hat. See, he doesn't have the hat there. That's how he looked. He was a demented, happy face with jagged eyes and a jagged mouth. I mean, wholesale, man. So, you know, do I still sound bitter? I hope I don't, but I, I'm a little miffed because now you're seeing merchandising and Madcap <laughs> has had a comeback. And there's, there's a, he's been, he's been fighting Deadpool in the comics. And my friend Danny says, dude, if Madcap Happy shows up in like Deadpool Five, you got to do something. And anytime <laughs> Danny's in the Walmart and he sees Madcap on a coffee mug, he texts me the picture and he gets me all riled up because I'm a pretty chill guy. But Danny, he he is Danny Cochran. He is so fired up about this, and he is one of my eyewitnesses, uh, character witnesses, eyewitnesses that can attest that this was definitely my creation, 155 percent. 155. <laughs> what Danny likes to say is he came up with this. He says Stan Lee would have been horrified because he always had the credo with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. So how do you justify taking an idea from a kid and a loyal Marvel fan? I don't know. Ask I don't Kirby's think Stan family. Lee. What's that? I, I said ask Kirby's family. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because they've been fighting about that stuff for years. Oh, yeah. And Ditko as well, I think. The Ditko estate, if I'm not mistaken. Steve Ditko. Yeah. He left Marvel. I mean, for not getting proper credit in his mind. That's He left Marvel back in 1966. Yeah. Left the amazing Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, Strange Tales. Rumor has it that that's part of the reason why uh, Marvel keeps altering characters so much. So instead of Namor, you've got Namor. And <laughs> and uh, they so that they don't have to pay credits to the families of the people that actually created some of these characters, and that they're kind of um, people are getting really nervous about the upcoming uh, Silver Surfer mm -hmm. because it's like okay, we're going to switch Silver Surfer around, and people are like, uh, and I've seen a lot of the arguments. Oh, look, you don't know your Marvel history because there's already been a female Silver Surfer. Yeah, in 2012 for three issues. <laughs> um yeah that's not the silver surfer that's like a what if incarnation that that's recent but you know i digress if they use um if they alter silver surfer enough they don't have to credit silver surfer or the people who actually own the rights to it mm -hmm. and that's part of it mm. mm-hmm but uh, this is your bullpen bulletins. Now, where is this from? This is from the Incredible Hulk issue number 316. Yep. And this would have been published in November 1985, announcing the winner of the official Marvel Comics tryout contest. And let me guess, your name's not in here. No, no, no. <laughs> Mark, you know Mark Bagley. He's a yes. big-time comic book artist. He won for Pensler. Oh, wow. And he was in Marietta, Florida at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Doug Hazelwood won the inker spot from Victoria, okay. Texas. Robin Riggs won the title of letterer. And uh, Robin was in the UK. I don't know if that was a male or female. That name could go okay. either way. But Robin Riggs was in East Sussex, United Kingdom. And then uh, P. Jeannie Pasta of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania won the colorist position. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what the thing is, 
they say, hey, you may not have won, but you can still send in ideas. I see that. And that's in like, what, the third paragraph there? Yeah. Right. Can you still try out? Of course you can. <laughs> yeah. The contest is over, but Marvel has always welcomed submissions. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. They, <laughs> you got to wonder, because people must submit things, or even back then, submit ideas constantly mm -hmm. to uh writing ideas or alterations or character ideas especially and i remember uh who is it larson uh, isn't larson the guy who does um savage dragon i think so yeah he's he ran a contest like that in the 90s out of, right. out of his comic uh like hey you know send in your character ideas and the best one will fight the savage dragon but how many how many free ideas do you think he was handed? Not saying anything against Larson, but if he wanted to go in that direction, mm -hmm. hey, it, it tons of stuff and most of it with no way to prove where it came from. Do you think? Uh, do you think? Do you think that's a phishing scheme in some instances? It could be. It could be. It, it, I that you know that that's very probable because most people they might not notice or they might feel helpless yeah. or like uh, i mean you were a kid what were we gonna do you know that's it that's it and or if it does turn into something then they can double back and acknowledge if it's a small thing and if it's a big thing there's always a settlement if there's enough money to go around yeah. and they can correct it then. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if, if, you know, that that's a plausible concept that they could do that just to get ideas and then just do whatever with it afterwards. Not again, not just with, um, not just with characters, but also with plots yeah, and storylines. Story oh, yeah. Hey, someone texted me and said I'm backwards. I don't care that I'm backwards. It doesn't matter to me. I don't know what that's all about. But oh well. <laughs> but getting, back, getting back to the topic and this article that you have on the screen, yes. uh, Jim Scooter is the one who wrote that, who was in charge of Marvel. And he's a hell of a nice guy, I might add. But uh -huh. um, uh, he also says the need for new talent remains and the opportunities for creators are better than ever. You sure. can still buy a copy of the official Marvel Comics tryout book, too. It can help you polish up your comic skills and prepare for a career in comics. And it's the best way to submit samples, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. There's more to it, but you get the, you get the point. Mm -hmm. And it'll give us 13 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Minus commissions. Yeah. Got, I wonder how many of those they must have sold back in the day. I could just imagine. And somebody asked here, McNichol said, uh, who's the character we are talking about? And of course, Madcap. that character is Madcap. That is correct. And I'll put the image back up on here so that okay. people can see what I'm talking about or what we're talking about. That was Madcap that uh, Chance here is talking about. Said, hey, man, they got me from Madcap. No, I am, you know, and this has happened before. There's even a rumor. Actually, I think it's been proven that Wolverine was created through a fan submission to Foom, Friends Ooh. of Old Marvel magazine. Oh, wow. wow. I don't know if there's any validity to that, to that or not. There's Madcap. There's yeah, my character. There he is. That is Madcap, and that is the character that Chance worked on for a submission for a Marvel contest in the 80s and never heard anything about it again and then one day one in an issue of captain america lo and behold right. Right. oh joy <laughs> there's my character they changed his name but that's him that's yeah. him and uh did i did i win <laughs> did i did, did, what happened <laughs> and thank you stone uh, sour thank you stone sour you made a donation to the channel always appreciated always appreciated and that you know i could see that too i could see the flood of emotions where one moment 
you're all excited because you're mm -hmm. like, I made it, mm -hmm. especially when you're a kid. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. my God, I made it. I'm going, I'm going to be somebody. I'm going somewhere. And then it starts, you know, the ship starts to sink. Right. As, as you realize, hey, wait a minute, you know, I, I didn't actually hear anything about this. And uh, Hugo uh, says, same thing happened to them and their friend in 75, 76. They sent Marvel several character ideas, with drawings, characters, powers, origin. They switched up names and changed colors. Hmm. Interesting. And who? anybody uh, we would recognize there, Hugo? And uh, Tommy says the editor at the time says he created Wolverine now, mm. which is what uh, Chance was alluding to earlier there. But yeah, that, um, that's uh, Mad Cat there laying on the bed looking yep. inappropriate. <laughs> I don't want to walk in and see that guy laying on the bed like that. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that is but, uh, creepy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could totally do with that. I think your cats could take them, though. Oh, probably, yeah. And what else have we got here? Uh, uh, just cat. another example. Just another yeah. example of what uh, Madcap can do. Happy is what I originally named them. Just to, yes. I know I'm repeating myself. Anyone that's tuning in late, they just okay, changed yeah. the name. We, still have, we yeah. still have people coming in. Yeah. And Hugo emphasizes here. It says they designed and named characters Paladin, Jack Frost. Liberty Legion, 3D Man, all borrowed by Roy Thomas in 76. Mm. Unbelievable. And that's what we were just uh, talking about because uh, Chance had suggested a, a little bit ago there that some of these contests could be phishing scams <laughs> from these companies looking for ideas, looking for characters, plots, storylines, yeah. anything like that. The Marvel House of Ideas. Yeah, the Marvel House of Ideas. As if they don't have enough of their own. You know, I mean, you, you would think. You would think. Well, when you get creatively bankrupt, you don't have anything. So you run mm -hmm. out of ideas. So ah. What so you see there is when I met Jim Shooter. Um, yeah. He autographed Captain America 309. That's just the certificate of authenticity. I referenced this earlier, anyone who's tuning in late, I, on yeah. August 14th, 2021, I spoke with the Jim Shooter about this matter and how Mark Gruenwald, who died in 1996, and Paul Neary are credited with the creation of my character. And he said, quote, and I have it on tape, I told them not to do that, unquote. That's on tape. Um, and I should have sent to you that audio. We could play it for your fabulous audience, but um, but I have it. And I, I, I put it on my channel, The Nostalgic Pod Blast, and on sure. Chance Acting Demo on YouTube as well. Um, but to date, I've never contacted Paul Neary about this issue. And he's appeared in conventions, as you guys know, in the Atlanta, Georgia. There I am with Jim Shooter right there. Yes. And it's, what's interesting about Jim, the rumor is, actually, I think it's been proven. He sold the rights to the Secret Wars to Disney for $10,000. That seems low. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, feels that seems low. Yeah. Considering yeah. the millions of dollars that will be made when it's a yeah. motion picture. Pretty, pretty similar uh, story with the creator of Batman and um, mm. and Monopoly. You know, you hear you hear stuff like that. The guy who created the Monopoly game, I think, walked away with three hundred dollars or something. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah, I, I, if I'm not if I'm remembering it correctly, but you hear about stuff like that every once in a while, and people, you know, they need a quick buck and they don't think it's a big deal, and they end up shooting themselves in the foot, unfortunately. Well, at that time, you don't know it's going to be something. Of course. So most right. you take what you're going, what you get. You know, like okay, I came up with this idea. Somebody wants to give me three hundred dollars. Yeah, know. I need the money. Yeah. You know, I got to put some uh, bread on the table. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. And most things, truthfully, most things don't pan out. Yeah. So. so you $300 sell, is a lot because it might not take off. You sell an idea and it ends up collecting dust and who cares? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but sometimes. Sometimes it takes off. Something takes off. Yeah. May I address a comment from Tommy I, Fletcher? Let me see. There it is. I'll put it up. Is that it? Yes. That is correct. But in this case, they promised you'd be treated just like an employee of Marvel Comics. It was right there in print. Yeah. In the ads, in the bullpen bulletins, everything. That's the distinction here. Okay. Yeah. And, and we I'll, uh, yeah. 
I will. Um, I'll switch back to that. It's a contest photo here. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, switch that off. Find the contest uh, photo again, so that people can see that. Is it this one. And you know, and while you're doing that, I'll just say it, it was flattering, and at the time, it wasn't as big a deal as it is now. Because who could predict? Streaming shows on Disney Plus, uh, multi-billion dollar profits at the box office. Yeah. And yeah, so that is that is the style of my submission. I did it just like that with my character, but the ad shows Jim, a drawing of Jim Shooter promising that you will be treated just like a Marvel employee. You will be compensated. It, it uses yeah, the word yeah. find it here. And that's what I was reacting to when I submitted when I was 13 years old. There this it is. That's yeah, the I don't one. know if you can see that, Tommy, but that's the difference. This was part of a promotion they had yeah. in the 1980s when I was a kid. So, And my character was definitely stolen. And I hate to hear that there's people in the chat talking about it happening decades ago, even before the 1980s. I mean, I hate that. Just talk about disillusionment. You know, I mean, I'm a total Marvel fan. I'm yeah. not trying to sound bitter or negative, but I was ripped off. That's just a fact. And that's the last paragraph here, and I'll read it off because I can see it better. It says, each creator will receive our standard rates, benefits, and incentives. You'll be treated just like the other professional creators whose work appears in Marvel Comics. So what are you waiting for? Your future at Marvel Superstar awaits. Your future as a Marvel Superstar, that is, mm -hmm. awaits. And, and I that's... trusted them. I, mean, I have a history of sending in letters that were published before, just before I sent in my character yeah. idea. So anyway, <laughs> I just, what can you do? Look, that was a long time ago, granted. Absolutely. But, um, you know, but... Now you're seeing Madcap have this resurgence in comic books. So, yeah, there's my letter right there. <laughs> yeah. Published in uh, Hulk 296. Mm. And Robert has a point there. He says, the, uh, you'll be treated like a Marvel employee. You'll, they'll do you dirty. <laughs> and, um, oh, what is that guy's name? I'm trying to... Uh, is it... JJ, um, help me out here. Artist of Fool Killer. JJ Birch, the, yeah. the, the 90s food killer. Mm -hmm. JJ Birch. Right. And, yeah. Now, I, I spoke to him when I used to uh, run with uh, Great Eastern Conventions in Massachusetts back in the early 90s. And I had a conversation with him. And he said, you have, in the comic industry, this is before Image, okay? Before Image uh, was a glint in the milkman's eye. He said, um, you have only really two choices in the comic industry, Marvel or DC, okay? Mm -hmm. DC is stupid and Marvel is evil. Mm -hmm. So you can be evil or you can be stupid. But the the problem the thing is though sometimes evil pays you better. Wow, that's what he said. And um, it, it, he was uh, he had ju he just worked on the Fool Killer at the time. He was at the show signing copies of Fool Killer number one. And good luck finding a Birch autograph anywhere. Hmm. You can't find those. But he was signed on for, great, for Great Eastern for free. Uh, because <laughs> back then. Even McFarlane did not charge for an autograph mm -hmm. when he when McFarlane was at the show. He limited it to two signatures per person, but he, it was free. But um, yeah, that's what he said. DC is stupid, and Marvel is evil. So you have to take your pick. And he was like, you know, I'm working with Marvel because they just pay better. Wow. Yeah, the merchandising aspect is what really chaps my ass, though. That's the thing. <laughs> Because there's a, that's a lot of money there, man. It's like, dude, you know. But now, to be fair, you know, I probably shouldn't say this. Or Lori would say, shut your mouth. But I got to be fair. Disney did not own Marvel in 1984, 1985. True. They just, that was Marvel Comics. So 
Yeah, I, I don't know if I have anywhere to go with this or not, but I do think being a minor does at the time does yeah. re- give a pathway to revisit this one way or the other. But I'm yeah. grateful to find people like you letting me tell my story. You That's- know, it helps like therapy. I, I can <laughs> finally move on. I can get it off my chest. <laughs> yeah, therapy without the medication. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I don't know what your problem is, but let me get my prescription pad out, and uh, and we'll we'll set you up with something. And you know, if you're still alive in a month, you let us know. Um, I know I'm awful. I don't trust medicines. But again, that's your that's your letter. That's one of your letters, I guess, that was published by Marvel. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. And your old that's address. The only one I had published because after that, I didn't want to send them a thing. After Madcap showed up, happy. Yeah. Uh, oh, I still collected the comics, still read them, still loved them, but was no longer going to submit creative ideas to that company mm. after that. Yeah, and people are talking about that. Um, oh, where was that? Somebody said that they um, they do that to each other all, all over the place. Tommy, I believe it was. Big Box mm. says DC kind of stole Spider-Man. They all steal it. And uh, Tommy here says Marvel and DC have a long history of stealing characters from each other. Well, look at uh, Swamp Thing and Man Thing. Man Thing, they're basically the same character. It's the same character almost, except one doesn't talk. Yeah, Yeah. one One is mindless, and the other one isn't. Yeah, one doesn't speak. And Stone Sour made another donation to the channel. Thank Thank you, you, uh, Stone Stone Sour. Sour. Kitty Fund, and take care of our uh, take care of our shelter cats. Take all, nice. all the help we can get. Very much appreciated. <laughs> and, and you have Mr. Fantastic and Plastic Man. And of course, to your point, uh, you know who came first, don't you? Of Swamp Thing and Man Thing. Man Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Man Thing was first by a few months. Yeah. And then there, there was a, well, there was a DC prototype of, uh, in, uh, I had, what's, uh, what's, who was it? The Stranger? Phantom, Phantom Stranger, Stranger, Phantom Stranger mm-hmm. issue uh, had a prototype prototype of it, but um, which really you know flies under the radar. That's that would be a good like key pick that people aren't aware of. Yeah, it is that uh, is that prototype appearance. But those two people, those two creators, knew each other, mm-hmm. and so whoever's idea it really was, you'll never get the truth out of it. It's no. like asking a professional wrestler to recount something that happened. I, it's, you never know if it's really the truth. You both are so knowledgeable about comic books. What is your opinion on Jack Kirby's return to Marvel in the 1970s? And then Steve Ditko's return to Marvel in 1989 when he did Speedball and other things. I think, in my opinion, I think their artwork was kind of passe by then because you'd had Neil Adams come along and more advanced artists, John Byrne. And I loved them. I mean, no disrespect. I just think it just wasn't the same. You know, I think things had evolved had evolved a little bit get older and they can't quite do it the same anymore you know and you i think we got a taste of that with frank miller with that wolverine cover recently that they uh and it it looks absolutely ghastly and uh, not that he was that stellar of an artist to begin with but it was a unique style and you know you looked at it you were like yeah that's frank miller and if you looked at this now you couldn't tell that's frank miller if they didn't tell you Mm -hmm. you don't know what that is and it could be that he doesn't care it could be that he's too old to do it right or whatever just like in all things sometimes there's a point where you have to take a step back and just say yeah i i I have to admit i can't do this anymore that's hard for people i know you know Yeah. yeah it can be hard for people but again if you are coming in late i'll get i'm sorry i don't mean to cut you off if you're coming in late, this is uh, Chance from the Nostalgic Pod Blast. He is an actor in the uh, Atlanta area, yeah. and he has a show that he does on the weekends on fistfulofradio.com, podcasting out of Atlanta, and I believe also on Apple, that is uh, nostalgia-based. He created the character Happy, who is actually Madcap. It was renamed to Madcap and reworked by Marvel Comics after a contest submission, and they essentially uh, low-jacked his uh, character. Absolutely. Slipped it out from under him. But you had a point. Oh, I was just going to respond to the comment you put on the screen, agreeing with Hugo. Uh, You just put this on the screen a moment ago that Steve Ditko came back to Marvel 
1985, I think it was, to do ROM, Space Knight, the Parker Brothers toy. Do you guys have a ROM in your collection of toys? I no longer yeah. have a ROM. I used to. It's part of the collection that was stolen. Um, oh, God. Yeah, you remember. You know that story. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because uh, when I got it, dealers, you go to the toy shows, they had cases of those things. They couldn't get 10 bucks for a ROM in the box. How much is it now? You know, it's crazy how things change. Yeah. But yeah, I had a couple of them in the box. Nice boxes too, but it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. You go say, yeah, Hugo yeah. says, I think with artists, it's bad eyesight and their heart is no longer in the work. Yeah. Burnout or unhappy, they never got the money they should have from toys, movies, and etc. That's possible. Yeah. Or a combination thereof. And, Question for chance. Yes. He says, uh, Who's your favorite DC and Marvel characters, David asks. All right. Well, in order of your question, Superman is my favorite DC character. Okay. And those guys got screwed over too, who created Superman, uh, by the way. Talking about people that they, they finally, when Superman the movie came out, they finally got some recognition. Well, they had before that, but, but on the uh, Marvel side, the Green Goblin. Hence, Angry Girlfriend variant. We won't go there. We, you were okay. kind enough to invite me on to talk about that issue but i've always been a fan of the green goblin <laughs> right even though he's a villain for i love the green goblin <laughs> and i was gonna say and for those of you when who I went are to not aware I, I just want to interject really quickly for those of you who are watching who are not aware this is the chance from the angry girlfriend variant and he has been on one of our live discussions before and you can find it in our archive to hear the full story on that because it's not what you think it's 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 completely in left field from the narrative that's yeah. been spun by the people that currently hold that comic book. Yeah, and we did a interview with yeah. him and talked did a full in, interview in length about what happened with that. So I guess David will put a link to that. Um, in I'll try to I'll try to remember yeah, yeah. so that you can go back if you didn't see that because it was a very interesting story. Yes, of how that all went down with the angry girlfriend yeah so-called angry girlfriend variant or vindictive uh teenage girl variant would probably be a <laughs> more accurate, more accurate description <laughs> but um you were making a point you had just trailed off from the green goblin oh i was just gonna say i'm you guys are in georgia as i am and yeah. do you ever go to six flags well i know you're from boston originally right david yes lph are you from georgia i'm from south carolina Okay, well, I was just going to say, speaking of the Green Goblin, I was such a Green Goblin fan going way back that when I'd go on this ride called the Wheelie, it was a ride some of people that are old like me, Gen Xers, might remember in the Atlanta, Georgia area or have visited Six Flags. It would basically spin and spin and spin, and I'd pretend that I was uh, going mad and transforming into the Green Goblin just as a kid, just for fun. <laughs> Going, oh God! Because if if you've read the comic books, Norman Osborn, just like in the movie, the first movie from 2002, he's like a normal guy, but then he has the explosion, and um, you know there'll, there'll be episodes something will set him off where he'll become the Green Goblin personality. I don't know. I thought that was kind of kind of interesting that uh, schizophrenic side to Norman Osborn, and he'd get amnesia. When he'd be cured, it was kind of like uh, the mummy in the old Adam West Batman, where you get hit on the head with an object, and he didn't remember that he was uh, no, <laughs> King the, Tut. King Tut. <laughs> yeah, King Tut. I was going to say the King Tut, and even uh, even Adam uh, or Batman didn't believe it. Cause I remember there was a couple of times he's like, "Where am I? Oh, not again!" And then uh, and Adam <laughs> West is like, "Uh, yeah, okay," <laughs> and it kind of alluding to that maybe he was faking it. I, I, if you remember uh, from later in the seasons, I think probably around the third appearance, because he was on more than any other villain. Mm -hmm. Really, he was on there a lot, but um, more. Uh, but he, the way that Adam West approached that, like he he, did, he wasn't quite buying it that time. That like, oh yeah, sure, amnesia again. Okay, <laughs> that's such a TV cliche. Everyone gets amnesia in old TV yeah. shows. It's always well, an amnesia episode. That show was brilliant, though, the way that they did it, because as silly as it is and pretending like it was serious. Yeah. And we're getting that vibe. I know we're trailing a little bit here. We're getting that vibe from the uh, Linda Carter Wonder Woman that we're watching right now. 
because you oh, shoot when absolutely. I was a kid mm -hmm. and you know, but now rewatching it again, I'm like, this reminds <laughs> me of the 66 Batman because it's redonkulous and they <laughs> act like it's not the rope keeps changing size. She takes off this string gold lasso and then climbs up the building and the ropes like that thick, like you're in a high school <laughs> gym and, um, or she's running, she's got to be somewhere. So she's going to, jog down the highway like this in high heels and somehow she gets a hundred miles away it's just some of the stuff that they do in the show it's like oh my god they can't take it they can't expect us to take this seriously and then how uh steve trevor's always insulting her too yeah oh i hope you realize you can't possibly enter a beauty contest it only really gorgeous women uh <laughs> would apply for something like that but uh you know no, Diana. and it's like are you serious you just cut Diana down to size. And then he told her um, <laughs> that she looked like Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford is not you remember a pretty, Joan Crawford. Pretty <laughs> pretty. She is not a, t an attractive woman at all. No. <laughs> no wire hangers ever. Yeah. 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 She was a very, <laughs> very stern looking woman. And then he was like, well, maybe around the ankles. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> You know whose birthday it is today? I heard this on WBHF, BK on the air on the radio. Lyle Wagner's birthday is today. Steve Trevor. Oh, really? Is he still alive? In heaven. He's, he's, no, he's, he's deceased. I should have said heavenly oh. birthday. But So is that where the episode you left off at? Beauty on Parade? Is that where you are at? In think, uh, no, where, when her sister. We? Her sister Her came. sister just showed up. As if we saw it's the first of the yeah, two-parter. Two her, her the really feminine to speak. And it introduced Deborah, Deborah Winger. Yeah, her mm -hmm. really dopey sister. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't know her left from her right. It's pathetic. She comes back, spoiler alert, later on in yeah. the show. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, of course. Okay. But um, just to change a little bit, because it's, yes. it's, it's come up um, about that guy that was bullied and he committed suicide. What's his name? Oh, Somebody yeah. say his name. I forgot it already. It it came up a couple of times. Um, Pickard, Ed Ed Pickard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he died recently from bullying. And I've been watching some videos about it, and and they were talking about how toxic the comic book community is, and how people bully you because of your collecting style. Um, you know, if you if you grade your books, you don't grade. It's just like toys and action figures, but it does seem a little harsher. A little more drama filled. Yeah, in the in comic, the comic community. book. Yeah, I just wondered what your thoughts were about that because it's been coming up, and I wanted to um, talk about that just a little bit and sure, talk to sure. the um, to the audience and y'all chime in. Um, yeah, if anybody to... has any questions, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. Or if you missed the beginning of this and you wanted to uh, a recap real quick. Mm -hmm. Personally, I love the comic book community. I think it's very welcoming. I've never had any issue, you know. Um, that's just my opinion. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Well, Can uh, I show you more specifically? More specifically, um, within so so-called um what are they what are they what's the reference for them gatekeepers no oh, content creators oh content creators the youtube mm -hmm. influencers. So, uh, social influencers mm -hmm. within the comic community more so oh now that's different that's different <laughs> yeah, i think this is where the toxicity is coming from mm -hmm. not necessarily the people the gang you run into at the comic show yeah but okay from that the community, that's, yeah, I should have clarified. That's, clarify that's that. where this happened. That's Ed Pisker. Yeah, Ed yeah. Pisker. That's that, the um, that's the name. That's where this happened. Yeah, he oh. was bullied online, and I saw some video because I was like, you know, because they said um, comic book creator bullied and committed suicide. So I watched some videos on it, and um, you know, it, it was just like really weird because it was like they just picked on this guy to the point that. He just couldn't handle it no more and, and cracked and committed mm -hmm. suicide. So I was just wondering if you were following it and your thoughts on just how toxic or have you, but you said that you don't, you never experienced that from the community. I did in one regard though, um, when it came to the angry girlfriend variant, I, I got mm -hmm. a lot of heat, you know, from people were hearing one side of that story. 
And, uh, you know, and I, I, so yeah, I did experience not to the point where I would commit suicide. My, my heart's and my, my heart and, um, uh, soul and prayers to the family of the victim of that. But, um, no, I haven't really followed it. I'm glad you brought it to my attention. I'm going to look into it and research that. But, yeah. Uh, I Go ahead. I'm sorry, oh, sir. Okay, what do you, what do you want to show? Hold on. Well, let me take this off, and then I'm going to make you big so we can okay. see what you got. What do you got there? Since we're talking about me creating Madcap back in 1984, here is a wall my mom painted. She's a pretty oh, okay. good artist, and uh, she based it because people were talking about in chat John Ramita Jr. and John Ramita Sr., and uh, this was right shortly after the Hobgoblin was introduced in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 238. And on my bedroom wall, my mom painted this wonderful uh, little representation of the Green Goblin, my favorite character, the Hobgoblin, and then the amazing Spider-Man. And that Spider-Man was used as a corner box image, but originally that was on the cover of a Spidey Super Stories book, the kitty oh, version wow. of Spider-Man. Okay. Uh, so I just want to show that just to okay. preserve it. That was, the, that was at the house. My letter um, mentions 4983 Odin's Way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so people don't be going there looking for chance because you won't find it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tommy down here mm -hmm. emphasizes what happened. Uh, he says that they got his art show and contracts canceled, mm -hmm. and other comic creators he thought were friends turned their back on him. Yeah, because he was a big time artist. He he mm -hmm. he he drew for 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 the comics you know it wasn't like some little side shade tree comic um artist yeah he was like a he real was working deal. yeah he was working yeah so some lies well it was it was unfounded they didn't say that um mm -hmm. that this the story was true or not um but somebody on youtube just ran with it and then the person's video i saw they showed like every day this person was putting out videos talking about him, about how he sent some messages to this underage girl, some inappropriate messages. And um, which but, apparently wasn't true. Yeah, well, but, they never yeah. it, it was never founded. Yeah. That it was true or not true. So, you know, it's it's, just, it's real sad that um, you know, you're trying to you're trying to get yourself together or whatever, you're a collector. And you want to collect your way, but then you got these people, and they call them gatekeepers a lot of times. Or neckbeards. Neck yeah, <laughs> that's the one I've heard. Um, that just destroy you for the way that you choose to collect. Um, and I don't know. I just, I just find it all, all ridiculous. Yeah, and you see, unfortunately, uh, competition between a lot of the. Uh, between a lot of the mm -hmm. YouTube channels, both comic and toy, they let some of them, mm -hmm. not everybody, but some of them, they like to create these feuds yeah. for attention. And it will get a lot of views. Mm -hmm. It will get a lot of views. And, and that's also part of the reason why we try to stay as drama free as possible. Yeah. Because I don't want to get into a feud with anybody. Um, I, I don't need the views that bad. You know, <laughs> yeah. I. You know what I mean? Because you know, of more views means revenue, obviously. And yeah. so they're like, "Oh yeah, if I if I talk all bad on somebody, I'll get fifty thousand views, and then yeah. we'll keep this going back and forth." And it, not all money is good money, you know. Yeah, and then you put all of this clickbait, um, you know, thumbnails and and words on your on your video just so people can click on it, and it's just I don't know. It's just you. It's enough drama in life without you creating it yeah in a space that's supposed to be fun and enjoyable and you meet people that you can share your thoughts and ideas with share your collections and oh i have this did you read that now we can talk about this together we could talk about records we could talk about movies tv shows anything but you always got people to come in and just destroy it yeah well so many people try i hate clickbait <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they get a lot of negative comments too and it just you know they feed off it and i, I don't i rarely get anybody say anything negative it, it, if they do it's usually something stupid like uh, your your display sucks because you don't have any deltops you know buy me some 
<laughs> you, yeah, go buy you know how expensive that crap is. <laughs> I'm fine right where I am. Thank you. Yeah. I just, you remember that comment? Yeah. Yeah. They say that the room is too dark. I can't watch. Oh well, they don't watch. Shut it off. Go yeah. watch something else. Go, go look at your own collection. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a tote in the garage. If but, they uh, even have one. <laughs> And you get criticized by people that don't even have a vid, uh, a channel. You make a video. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, you're talking, about my lighting, you're talking about my lighting being crappy? No. no, your lighting is fine. We can see you fine. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> anyway. All right. <laughs> but anyways, again, this is uh, Chance from mm -hmm. the Nostalgic Pod Blast or <laughs> at the Nostalgic Pod Blast on YouTube. You can find him there. And he does do, for those of you who are tuning in late, he does do um, podcasting on fistfulofradio.com where you can find him on the weekends talking about many different things nostalgic. Yeah. Many nostalgia um like topics yeah stuff. different topics yeah. no drama <laughs> so <laughs> i think for real interviews you know uh they're yeah. archived uh and i've had i've had some real guests on like heather thomas from the fall guy hey that new movie i was skeptical of that but it actually looks pretty good um what i saw an interview movie? on the tonight show oh what's that what movie is that the, the Fall Guy, based on the Lee Major show, comes out May third, and uh, yeah, Ryan I thought that something was gonna. They were gonna redo that. Okay. Yeah. Ryan was on the Tonight Show, and he did one of his own stunts where he does like this huge fall from cables, and I thought, and the director's a real stuntman, so that's a good sign because usually these reboots suck. You know, they're usually not very good, but now I'm starting to think it might be decent. I'm a big yeah. fan of that old show, but again, I'm digressing here. We're talking about comic books. Majors was uh started as a stunt man, didn't he? Because I remember uh, he started he started he got his head chopped off in a Joan uh River Joan Rivers really Joan Crawford, you talked about her earlier, Joan Crawford movie mm -hmm. called Straight Jacket. And then he started the Big Valley, which is a Western show in the nineteen yeah. sixties, and then of course uh Owen Marshall, counselor at law, and then the six million dollar man and the fall guy, and then a lot of other things after that. Because I remember reading a uh, his reading a book of his in the eighties, and he was talking about how they'd mess with him on the set of the Six Million Dollar Man, like he's supposed to kick a door in, but the uh, the coordinator would neglect to remove the pegs from the door, and he says, and I'd kick it and I'd be jarred up to my teeth, and they'd all laugh at me uh, with because he'd do a lot of his own stuff on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering if he was a professional stuntman at some point. Oh, you're too kind, Esmeralda. <laughs> and again, what uh, the main topic of tonight was, uh, for uh, those of you who might have uh, tuned in late, and you can gather from the description and the title, is that Chance is the originator of the concept of the character Madcap who he had named Happy, and they renamed it, and they gave him a little hat. <laughs> and uh, so we'll put a hat on it, and Chance won't know it was his character. That's what it is. It's a disguise. Yeah. It's it's kind of like uh, the disguises that you'd see in a cartoon, or like, what's yeah. his name? Uh, Clark Kent with the glasses. Oh, yeah. Those <laughs> <silly glasses. laughs> but Linda Carter does the same thing. She put on the glasses and her little um, navy. <laughs> She spins around and changes, and then you can't tell. Are yeah, because now her hair is out, and she don't have on the glasses anymore. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of the early episodes where she spun? It was so primitive, the effect before the explosion, just the clothes kind of disintegrate and disappear. It's but very no, she was story. holding it in her hand, and then she would go hang it up in the closet. Yeah, it was like the first two episodes, I think. And she would spin, yeah. and they just kind of phase the two images uh, overlap and then she would have it in her outfit and she'd stick it in a drawer or something yeah. and put it in the closet yeah but uh stuff like that you know what that makes me think of is the tick oh yeah the original tick show not the remake but the original live action tick when he was invited to join Ooh. the superheroes legion and the guy um he had his glasses off and he's asking, where is, uh, I can't remember the names of the characters, but he was like, you know, where's Super So-and-So? And he was like, it's me. No, you're not. You're that guy. And he was like, no, look. And he put the glasses on. He goes, oh, there you are. 
where did your friend go? And he's like, no, see? And he was like, where did Super Guy go? Oh, you my know, gosh. Because wow. the, tick the tick's got an IQ of like 50. But it, it's, it's <laughs> hilarious. I got to show you that this is a Wonder Woman episode on 16 millimeter film. Here's how cheap Warner Brothers was when it comes to the DVD and Blu-ray releases. They had like a little trailer, a nice little one minute, 30 second trailer before the opening credits in season two, specifically the first two months. Mm -hmm. And on the DVDs, it's missing. It was on the Columbia House VHS releases. It's on my films, but it's not on the DVDs. And they, they said when the Blu-rays were released, they've been digitally remastered. They were the same prints as the DVDs because there was a, a mess up in the opening credits where instead of showing red, white, and blue, when the star comes on, you'll, you'll see when you get to season two, it's red, white, and black, which I thought was weird. And okay. that was on the 2005 DVD release. And I thought, is that supposed to be a statement about George W. Bush at the time or what, you know, what was that red, white, and black? Cause it was always red, white, and blue. And on my film, it's blue. It's just, it was bizarre, really bizarre. But um, anyway, um, but my films are really neat and they have great color. And by the way, that feminine mystique you just watched, they mm -hmm. also cut out, there was a great little trailer at the end of part one. This is Linda Carter here. Stay tuned for some exciting scenes for the conclusion of the feminine mystique. And they showed scenes that were like different takes mm -hmm. than in the actual aired version. And why did they cut that from the Blu-ray and DVD? It just irks me. I'm so grateful for my film prints. All of the two parters in the recaps, are you streaming it? Or are you watching on DVD or Blu-ray? How are you watching one on DVD? Yeah, they um they didn't show any of the recap. So when you watch part two, there was always a recap. They cut that out as well. I don't know why they did that. It must have been they produced less discs overall. You know, if you do the math and I don't know what what the logic was, but they did. They cut all that stuff out, and that's what collectors want. You know, the original yeah. stuff, yeah. the original. Broadcast. That's the same trouble that um that the studios had when they released uh, Tom and Jerry in box sets and they had altered the voice of uh the house mother yeah the because uh, you remember the uh the original thomas and it was the black lady's house yeah. uh, right and they said oh well, her voice sounds too stereotypical so they altered it and they got so many complaints they had to reformat a disc and mail it to everybody who complained because it was like thousands upon thousands of people bitching about it. Because that's what you remember. That's what you remember. So that's what you expect to hear. And so what if her voice sounded like that? Yeah. You know, it's people sound like that. You know, they weren't making fun of her. <laughs> so why would they do that? Afraid they'll be sued or something? I mean, I don't get it. What's the what's the thing? Be, what the thing? Correct. correct. Yeah, because I've got the Warner Brothers um, box sets that were produced like what twenty years ago on uh, on DVD, and in the beginning of each of the box sets, they've got Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg apologizing for if you're offended by uh, any of the stereotypes you might see in in the uh, in the cartoons that are coming on, and it's oh like goodness. I know what the hell I'm watching. I don't want to see Whoopi Goldberg. Let's let's get to the Warner Brothers here. I mean, they were shorts from the films from the from the movie theaters that were intended for adults yeah they were reformatted for children's television to to uh as filler for saturday morning stuff but initially they were written for adults yeah. it, adults aren't offended mm -mm. you know not uh, by that kind of mm -hmm. stuff Nothing. i know it's <laughs> well, we, we've gotten disclaimer crazy too like they have disclaimers before the Muppet show, you know, times were different then. And the same thing with the uh, Dean Martin roast for Jackie Gleason. They played one at 2 a.m. I recorded off catchy comedy and they have a big disclaimer. It originally aired February 1975 and they're saying these were different times. And, you know, just yeah. what are they scared of? They're afraid they're going to get sued. I mean, what? I don't know. They hurt somebody's little yeah. feelings. You know, they've done it to Goonies, too, now. Oh, really? Goonies, no now, Goonies now has a disclaimer about uh, inappropriate stereotypes. Well, we created a bunch of milk toast, so they all <laughs> sopping wet. But anyway, we're going to change the subject now. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to talk about a comic book and toys. Yeah. We're changing oh. the subject. Oh That's my why my God. show is called the Nostalgic Pod Blast because I blast off into different topics all the time. Yes. I stray away from, but you got to reel me in. So thank you for doing that, LPH. That's okay. No, no, I mean, no, it wasn't that. It's just I don't like to get off on a like a, right. a, a political, a political, socio-political. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. No, 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 we don't want to divide. Yeah. 
it yeah. does come up. It comes up. And it's but, okay to address it, but we don't want to get stuck there for an hour. Absolutely yeah, not. That's yeah, all. Yeah. So we <laughs> reel it back in. Well, I got a question for y'all. You know, I'm a fan of your channel. Uh -huh. Where okay. are you in Dallas? I know you've been watching Dallas. Oh. Comic book people, just let, let let me ask them this question, and we'll get back to the comic book talk. But um, we watched it Thursday. Pam and Bobby are divorced. They just went to court. They got their divorce. Jr. and the sister set it up so Jr. and Bobby went out for dinner, and Jr. hired those prostitutes. So one of them was all over Bobby when Pam and her new boyfriend came. So of course Pam was all upset about that. How, How can, can he Bobby be like do that? that? He's it's forgotten like... me already. You've got a dude on your arm walking into a restaurant the day the divorce papers are signed. Yeah. And yeah. you're mad at Bobby for doing what you're doing. But he wasn't I, doing anything because no. JR set, set it, it up. up. And I'm like, she's <laughs> such a hypocrite. She is a and uh, and I and I think of uh I think of uh JR because when the sister asked, Why are you doing this? Says, I'll tell you what, I never liked that woman from the day she walked into my house. <laughs> from day one, I have wanted her out of my family. Yeah. And, and I agree because I don't, I've never liked Pam. She's a hypocrite in every situation. Yeah. And she's stepped around on Bobby a couple of times. Bobby's yeah. never done anything. I really like Bobby and I hate how she's treating him. Are you referring to Mark, uh, the suitor for Pam with the mustache? Mark? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mar yeah. She's with Mark right now. The, oh, the okay. guy, the guy from, um, the guy from um, Rollerball. <laughs> he was Jonathan's. He was Jonathan's wingman from Rollerball. Remember? Yeah. You talk about awkward. Have you guys seen the Blue Lagoon? You know Christopher Atkins. I haven't the seen it movie? in a long time. I've seen it, but it's been a long time. Well, he, he's there's about to be a very awkward. This is not too big a spoiler. An awkward romance between Sue Ellen and him, and he's much younger than Sue Ellen. Yeah. And he, Jr. goes ballistic. Okay. Yeah, he's the the son's camp camp counselor or something. Oh god, yeah. it's, it's so awkward. That's the yeah, it, it's the coming. Way it's and everything. It's weird. Yeah, you oh. can kind of smell that one on the horizon. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> well, thanks for the Dallas update. I love that you're watching it once a week. I, in 2018, I watched all of them. I have them all on DVD. Yeah. Even the uh, TNT revival. Oh. Right, right here. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that too. I just well. I'm gonna watch a little bit to see how how it goes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Because what we do, and uh, a chance I'm sure you're familiar with this, but we'll we'll um, you know clue a few of the other people in who might not be aware. We don't we don't binge anything. We do it the way it was intended to be done because we watch primarily vintage television shows. Like we're watching Knight Rider. We're watching the 90s Flash, yeah. Barry Allen Flash, which is fun. The, you know, the Wonder Woman, Dallas, and it's one episode a week yeah. in a time slot. Unless it's a cartoon. If it's like a half-hour cartoon, we might watch two or episodes. Or a half-hour TV show. We yeah. watch two episodes. But one a week. It, like, uh, it took us, what, two years to finish uh, Dukes of Hazard. Oh, yeah. That. Two years. Well, I it? think it was, yeah, because it it's, seven, it's seven seasons. Yeah, you know. And it, then if we mm -hmm. miss a week, then you don't watch it that week. You watch it next week. Yeah, but you still only watch one episode. And yeah. that's that's pretty much how we uh, that's pretty much how we like to do it. Because uh, what we have found is when you binge watch, you you miss a lot. You yeah. forget things. You don't know what you saw. I had a conversation with a guy, and I had mentioned this. We did a video talking about this before. Uh, had a conversation with a guy who had just been watched, binge watched all five seasons of A Team, and I was like, "Yeah, what did you think of the Easter egg uh, in the beginning?" And he was like, "Which Easter egg?" And I was like, "In the opening credits, the Easter egg from uh, uh, for Battlestar Galactica." And he was like, "There's an Easter egg for Battlestar Galactica in the opening credits." And I was like, "Yeah," and he was like, "There's a, a Dirk Benedict walks past the Cylon and freezes." And turns around and looks, and then he and then he was like, "I must have seen the opening credits like fifty times. I don't remember that." Well, there you go. Yeah, That's what happens when you binge it. watch? Mm -hmm. My comment. What about 
Dean Kane and Terry Thatcher's New Adventures of Superman. That's a good show. Okay. Okay, we haven't watched it. We got uh -huh. to add that one. I'm pretty that sure has, we can find that on streaming. Go ahead. Yeah, that was it. That's that has my favorite Perry White, Lane Smith. Great Ooh. character actor. That's all I got to say about that. I thought he was awesome as Perry White. Okay. Awesome. Okay. While I do binge watch certain shows, it's hard to really enjoy a show if you, if you rush, rush through it. Through it, that's right. Yeah. And uh, and the other one that we're doing also is um, Star Blazers. Star Blazers is good. Yeah, it's actually really, really surprising as, as an adult. You know, you miss it when you're a kid, and that's the thing. It's either really good or it really sucks mm -hmm. when you go back and watch it as an adult. And this is on the really good side. It's um. It's well written. Yeah, the whole season is a story. That the uh, the artwork is good. The voice acting is good. It's like wow, this is really well put together. It's got good symphonic music to it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I want to find. A, I know there's a vinyl record of the music from that show. I wanna, oh, really? I want to find it. Um, yeah, it's impressive. And the Smurfs. Yeah, we watched the Smurfs, the Smurfs. <laughs> and Bernstein Bears. The Baron, the original, the uh, Berenstein Bears show. Yeah, we're watching that too. And keeping up appearances. No, no, yeah, keeping yeah, up appearances. Keep that's right. That's right. Keeping up appearances is yeah. uh, is on Mondays. Is hilarious. Yeah, the way you're doing it is great, and you don't have to worry about summer reruns. At least you can bypass yeah. the three months of reruns. Mm -hmm. Even though you're watching in real time, you get to bypass the summer reruns. So that's good. So you still get ahead yeah. of the curve. Yeah. yeah, and then when one is over, we just add something else. You know, we just put something else in its place. at the end of it. Yeah. yeah. But we'll watch two shows Monday through Friday. The weekends we'll watch like um like tonight we'll watch um Invincible because we watch Invincible on Saturday. It's one of the few modern shows we watch. Yeah, we'll watch that, and we'll watch like um Highway to Heaven. Yeah, I've never seen that. I have it on my DVR. I recorded a bunch of them, including the pilot, because I, I went through a Little House in the Prairie phase, and we watched like all nine seasons. And then right after that, he did Highway to Heaven. So I wanted to see that, but I haven't watched it yet. Most of it is pretty good. Yeah. There's a couple of episodes where you watch it and you're like, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, there's a few, like the, the, the homeless guy who's looking at like 10 years in prison for stealing something that cost three bucks. And I'm like, that doesn't happen. Nobody's yeah. going to do that. But there's other ones that'll absolutely break your heart. No, I'm not going to spoil it. But the homeless kid living in the box in the alley with his cat, that, with his cat, that one, um, that one will have you tearing up. Yeah, and it's like in the way the kid, uh, the way the kid acted through that whole episode, um, his acting was stellar. Yeah, and it, it, it'll break your heart. Yeah. it'll break your heart because you're like, oh my god, you know the things that he does, and he's so gentle and nice. And then he does these certain things where you're like, no, please don't, please don't. Oh no, because because <laughs> he's wow, it's so sad. And yeah. there's certain episodes like that are, that are just really, really good. And then every once in a while, you get one where you're like, what are you doing? Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> stupid. You know, and then you just gotta skip through it. But it's more, like, it's more good than bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, like I don't know if X Files is on the um. Radar. I never really cared for X Files. I never seen it. I, I didn't care for it because you got my my logic is you got one person who believes in aliens and one person and not supernatural, and the other one believes in the supernatural and not aliens, but they both see it every week. Yeah. You think you'd figure it out. <laughs> you know, that, that that's what annoyed me about it. You, you, you've been through like five seasons of Supernatural every week. You don't believe it. But mm -hmm. you believe in aliens. And the other guy believes in aliens and uh, not Supernatural and sees that every week and or, you know, vice versa. Mm -hmm. And the two of them are supposed to be working together. And I'm like, that, you'd think they'd have gotten on the same page by now. That used to bother me. <laughs> I didn't like David Duchovny's acting. David Duchovny, I thought, was a horrible actor. Oh, yeah. um, you were going to say something else before before I cut you off. Yes. No, I'm sorry. I keep over talking. Forgive me. I was going to say You're you fine. watch space. You watch Space 1999. What's cool yeah. is there is on YouTube a live 
stream 24-7 going on started April 10th from Shout Factory, who released Space 1999 on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. And it's a heck of a lot of fun, and there's a lot of chat and comments. I just wanted to put it out there because I'm a huge fan of that show. Sure. Yeah, um, Helen got on my nerves. She wanted. Oh, yeah. to kill, what's the guy name? The the main guy. Koenig. <clears throat> she wanted to kill Koenig a couple of times. Well, she wanted to date Koenig because it's like you're you're floating through the universe <laughs> in an out of control moon. You run into uh, see. Yeah. You run into <laughs> um, all these weird alien entities and supernatural things every week. And Koenig is telling you something. Oh, I, I'm telling you that those are not people. You might remember the episode. They're not people. They're creatures. And oh, no, you're, there's something wrong with you. That's obviously Dr. So-and-so. Here, let me give you an injection. Yeah. Lady, how often do you have to go through this? And you still don't trust this man? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, we were watching oh, Gunsmoke. But while my dad was here, he watched Gunsmoke literally all day long it's all he watches that's all well, he, he watches. was here for like and then mm -hmm. yeah he was here for like four months and on pluto you had the gun smoke channel and that's all he watched yeah so then we got burned out with gun smoke so we had to stop it for a while <laughs> for yeah, a while a break because it's 20 seasons and yeah. we're all I, I forget where we are like on season four or something i don't know but, where um, we are you know we'll get back <laughs> and he was here Oh my God, that's all. And then he was watching Beverly Hillbillies, and I couldn't do it. I was like, "No, you got to watch something else. I can't oh. do Beverly Hillbillies." That got on my nerves. <laughs> but you know what I like about Beverly Hillbillies is the uh, is the adjustment that they make to the theme to the song. Because when the when they're doing something and the guy sings the narration uh -huh. of what they're you know what they're like when they're marching down the street with the rifles and, yeah. and i used to get a kick out of the narration well pluto tv has all the beverly hillbillies me tv actually skipped episodes they deemed were inappropriate which really was annoying i was watching them for the first oh. time on me tv and they skipped i think about seven or eight episodes oh wow uh -huh. going back to a key up ep early episode uh in the first season anyway we don't need to go there nobody cares but <laughs> about the hillbillies but that's a whole other topic. I'll talk about it on my show. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. You're fine uh, it's Chance. fine. We appreciate um, you. Now, the prisoner I do have saved to watch is on it one on of disc. those. Okay, because I, I know it. it's on one of those uh, streaming networks, and I got it saved. Um, Gets real weird at the last episode, though. But oh yeah, it's uh yeah it's 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 an interesting uh, psychological thriller. Yeah. Patrick McGowan. Oh, it's a great show. Hank likes it. That's okay, Hank. <laughs> Renegade. I've seen a couple of episodes of Renegade. I got mistaken for uh, Lorenzo Long. I don't know how that happened. I, <laughs> I, I love was, it. I've been telling you guys, you've got to see this show. You will love it. I think I know what you guys would like and what you wouldn't like, and it's uh -huh. a great show. But it's not streaming anywhere. It's on DVD. Okay. okay. Oh, it's not streaming? Chance, are you, familiar, are you familiar with Bradley's? You know what Bradley's no. was? I'm going to write it down. No, you won't find it. But Bradley's Bradley's was a department store chain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm familiar like, with it. Yeah. Like Kmart. They had like 135 stores in um, on the East Coast. <laughs> and I used to work for Bradley's uh, for a while back in the um, early to mid-90s. And while I was, um, I was there, this <laughs> – the uh, while I was working – you know, and I have the red Bradley's vest on and I've got the pricing gun and all that other stuff. And these two little old ladies shuffle up to me and they're looking at each other. And I'm like, oh, you know, they're going to ask me where, you know, I don't know where are the pillows. I don't know. Excuse <sighs> me. Are you Lorenzo Lamas? Oh, and, I, and I'm no. like, uh, yeah. And I no. <laughs> without missing a beat. Okay. I go like this, Shh, we're filming. <laughs> and then they were like, and then they're like, oh, and they, they're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and then they, they shuffled off down the, down the, uh, down the aisle. <laughs> you are bad. <laughs> I was doing, 
there were two other employees there, and it's like, I don't believe you just did that, and they bought that. I just, oh, my <laughs> Lord. That's hilarious. I got a card I'm trying to find from Greece. He was in Greece. That was like one of the first things Lorenzo Lamas did. Oh, and of course, he was just, yeah, he was in Greece. He he was oh. the jock. He was the jock that Sandy like was dating Greece. to make Danny jealous. Uh -huh. I didn't like Greece at all. You can't see the resemblance. No. I, <laughs> <laughs> I here, saw the day the Earth stood still. And I thought that, it, that I one. thought at least the Bradley's vest would give me away, but you know. No. Oh, hold on, hold on a minute. That's Lorenzo Lamas in Greece. Oh, is it? He dyed his hair blonde. Yeah. Oh, you can't wow. see him very good in that card, but there you go. Greek Falcon Crest. Yeah, I only know the Falcon oh, yeah. Crest. Yeah, he was in Falcon Crest. <clears throat> yeah, The Day the Earth Stood Still was a good a good movie. Yeah, and, uh, and Twilight Zone, one of the best television series ever done. Yeah. There's only one bad episode of the Twilight that was Zone. The very last, the very last episode. episode. The so, one with the kids in the swimming pool. Yeah, where they go jump in the in swimming the pool, pool and then they're in another dimension. That yeah. was stupid. But that's still better than any modern day TV show. Fantastic acting. Yeah. Excellent cinematography and excellent use of negative space with the black and white filming. Yeah. Um excellent writing yeah and topics and this is why every time they've ever tried to bring uh twilight zone back they've screwed it up the topics from the original are still relevant so if you watch the original you get it you totally get where they're coming from and so when they try to bring it back it's like yeah but your uh, surlings was better <laughs> you know yeah, big box. You got to watch the original Twilight Zone every episode. Yeah. All of the episodes are relevant today. Even the oh, bad, yeah. even the bad one, is still better than any of the reboots. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I got yeah. them. All. I love them. Yeah. And yeah. The, the original Outer Limits is good. We saw the remake the of the Outer one. Outer Limits. Hit or and, miss. Yeah, and the yeah, remake the of the Twilight Zone. They're not horrible, you know. They're not horrible, but they're they they weren't the original. Now, a good movie we just saw that movie about oh, a seance on a rainy day. Yeah, that's the name of it. It's a seance on a rainy day. Yeah, watch that movie. That was a good movie. If you watch on YouTube night um newcastle after dark is a, a youtube channel. is a youtube channel <laughs> called uh, um newcastle after dark they put out one movie a month the movie for this month is seance on a rainy day it's a british watch, film yeah watch that film yeah it is an excellent 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 film that movie was good i mean the whole time you are just sitting on the edge of your seat like, oh my God! What, what the is hell happening? are you doing? Yeah, you're you, crazy. You don't know who to cheer for. You are cheering for dude? You're like, come on, dude! Don't let her do that to you. Come on! And then you get to the end, and you're like, oh shoot! Yeah, I don't want to tell you. This. I don't want to tell twist. you what happened. It's got a big twist. So I'm end. not gonna say anymore. Yeah. But find that movie. Um, if you can't, it's on YouTube right now. Yeah. Newcastle After Dark. Excellent movie. And Munin wants to know what I would have done if the ladies asked for an autograph. Oh, no. I would have let him off the hook. <laughs> I would have let him off the hook. But, you know, I couldn't resist um, messing with them, and they went for it. Yeah. So it's like, okay. And now they probably went to their little uh, quilting club and were like, we saw Lorenzo Lamas <laughs> filming Bradley's. <laughs> Chance, you were going to say something. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, David. I was going to say about Twilight Zone, it, if you see Poltergeist, there's an episode called Little Girl Lost of the Twilight Zone in season three. It was the That's same right. plot as yeah. where the yeah. little girl get, goes through the wall. Through the wall. Yeah. The basic right. plot is Poltergeist. Um, yeah. and I was going to ask, what did y'all think of the movie, Twilight Zone, the movie from 83? Did you ever see that one? Yeah, it we right. saw yeah. It, um, it. It was okay. It wasn't memorable. I saw it, and I've seen it a couple of times. It wasn't that memorable, mm -hmm. but um, you know, the 
after we went back and watched Twilight Zone recently, you see how many TV shows and movies has stolen the plot yeah. from Twilight Zone. Yes. And you watch a movie Every like, hey, episode. that's an yeah. episode of the Twilight Zone. That's yeah. the same plot of the Twilight Zone. So yeah, it's just it's just crazy. Again and again and again. Oh yeah, all of these Lewis people. Louis Gossett, yeah. OJ just people. died recently. Carl Weathers died. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people just died recently. And Robert likes the paintings from. Uh, they just had a video on YouTube talking about what happened to the paintings from Night Gallery. Really? Yeah, it's a video. Out, um, it came out like the last within the last two days talking about um, what happened to those paintings because those were some really good paintings. Yeah, it was well done. It was well done. Yeah. I, but did you know the last Twilight Zone in production order was the Come Wander With Me episode where the ladies haunting the guy with the song? You remember the song Come Wander With Me? That's right. The in the uh he he was a musician. Oh, and right. he was trying to uh yeah, he, he wanted to do the song and she was like, You can't you can't do the song because if you do you'll be stuck there. Oh yeah. And William William that comment showed up. Yeah. I don't know why your comments are <laughs> showing up. I'm clicking through um, I'm trying to catch up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and and showing as, as many as I can. And you knew you were in trouble anyway with the, the current or the most recent incarnation of Twilight Zone. They said it'll be so much better because they'll be using foul language. And I'm like, oh, man, you, you know, you don't need foul language to yeah. to have a good storyline or good acting or good plot. You know? Yeah. You don't. Yeah. So that, that would turn off right there. Yeah. Sort of a vision for HBO to put Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, Tales from the Crypt was really good. Uh -huh. I liked it. <coughs> on Max, I was so young. Is that on DVD? Tales from the Crypt? I'm it not sure. It should be. I'm not sure. Everything else is. It just <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> okay, let, I'm gonna try and catch up a little. I'm gonna try and catch up a little bit. The 80s one, 10 watchable. Um, profile in silver and once in future king, one's about JFK. And the and other, all this what are we twist talking endings, about? movies. Oh, suggesting, some, some, oh, some, some suggesting movies? films. Um, and again, you know, we uh, we had interviewed Chance tonight talking about his character that was evidently misappropriated mm -hmm. by Marvel Studios back in the 80s. And if you miss that, of course, this will be saved on on YouTube so you can go back and hmm. take a look at whatever you may have missed earlier in the discussion. He had created a character called Happy in mm -hmm. the early to mid 80s during a contest that was reformatted into Madcap. Very loosely reformatted because all they really did was give him a hat and change his name. Oh, he had a pistol for a heartbeat. But, you know, yeah. evidently the pistol didn't actually do anything. It was just a gimmick to the character. And he never received even credit. Mm. Never received even credit for it. <laughs> I had tales from... Okay. So it is on DVD. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I want to try and get that one because I've looked for it on, on streaming networks and I can't... I can never find it. Mm -hmm. 80s Twilight Zone still had two episodes. Okay. Okay, I think we're all caught up. So now we can continue on without talking. Yeah. Hey, that lady on the screen, she's the one that told me about the Space 1999 marathon on My uh, Flock. My Flock. So yeah, thank you, My Flock. I think she's in Southern California. Her name's Sarah. Really nice lady. Okay. Okay. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> And somebody wanted to know if you have if that's the Enterprise. Yeah, it looks like the NCC seventeen oh one sitting back there. Yeah, it's a it, it's a model I made when I was sixteen. And here's a sealed one. It's this kit. I know it's backwards, but you can still there you go. And here's my model I made of the Enterprise mm -hmm. when I was sixteen years of age. It's pretty nice, you know. I tried to do the nacelles correctly, and there you yeah. go. It is the Enterprise. Good eye. Good eye. And I have hmm. a... Oh, there goes Lou Gossett Jr. There's a, an eagle, dinky eagle. Uh, yeah. I have no collection like you guys have. You have the best toy collection, but 
There's the Romulan bird of prey model I made as well. Uh, the original yeah. Romulan bird of prey. Mm. Yeah, from the classic track. But uh, yeah. Oh, and speaking of uh, that nice man who mentioned Lou Gossett Jr., I met him in 07 at oh, Dragon yeah. Pond. Great guy. Uh, what a talent. And he'll be missed. And he was in the Invaders, by the way, in 1967. One of the he first things. In, did. Um, what's that airplane? Um, Iron Eagle. Iron Eagle. He was in the yeah. Iron Eagle films. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You um, go. Resting not only was MTV free in 24 hours, they actually played music videos. Yeah. So did VH1. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. BET played videos. They played a lot of videos. They also had some talking, but those show those channels were video channels. Now they yeah. play all reality TV. So it's like, how can VH1 still be Which is video all music? channel when all you play is reality shows and the same with mtv music tv um when all you play is reality shows hey patrick how are you yeah patrick's late to the game how you doing patrick yeah because uh yeah you can't trust any reality shows it's all it's all staged guys yeah. don't fool yourselves yeah, That's I, right, yeah. thanks esmeralda <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's a lot of good shows Thank out you. there. Um, it was something else that we saw, and I wanted to make sure I mentioned to let everybody know. But okay. definitely the one, um, a seance on a rainy yeah afternoon, on a rainy afternoon is a must watch. If y'all can find that, watch it. And I can't remember the other one. I think it's a TV show that we've been watching or a movie that we watched uh, recently, but I can't remember it now. But um, when we see something that's really good, I'm gonna try to remember. So when we come on the live stream, I can let y'all know. So in case anybody wants to see it, it can have something good to see. Yeah. Cameron did an interview with Starlog FF Smasny. He let it slip. He swiped the Terminator from the outer limits. Yes. The opening yes. of the movie TV are exactly the well, same. Well, the Terminator, it it. Yeah. it appropriates elements from a lot of places actually i mean because they took elements of the, the from the terminator they took elements from westworld mm -hmm. from um oh, what's his name on westworld you brenner. Yule brenner yeah somebody right. said that earlier yeah and also they took uh elements skynet is a reflection of colossus colossus was colossus. a good movie yeah. if y'all ever saw that where they, I mean, and yeah, where a computer that takes over the world because they let it run amok. Um, but the yeah. guy that plays Victor Newman is the main character. Yeah, and so they they borrowed elements from a lot of places, but they put it together well because, especially the first the first two films in particular are classic. Now, mm -hmm. yeah, the other stuff, you know, it, it, it the first two are the best in my opinion. Go ahead, Chance. That Outer Limits episode he's referring to is Soldier, written by Harlan Ellison, season two of The Outer Limits. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael Ansara played the soldier from the future, and he was married to Barbara Eden from I Dream of Jeannie at the oh, time. Okay. They had I one child that. together, and he sadly died of a drug overdose, her only child. She's still alive in her 90s. God bless her, Barbara Eden. Mm. Didn't he have like a, like a, a synthetic hand? No, that's yeah. Demon with the Glass Hand. Robert Culp played that character. That's right. That's and it right. had Robert Arlene Martell in it, who later played T'Pring in Star Trek, Spock's wife. Okay. In uh, that classic episode oh, of Mock Time season. She, she did not want to be married to Spock. She was right. Spock's fiance. Yes. She wanted <laughs> Strawn. And Strawn wanted her. Yeah. Yeah. Lawrence Montaigne so. played Strawn. Yep. Or so they thought. But, yeah, yeah, I remember. MTV started reality show with um, what was the name of that show that they had with those college teenagers? Um, something Life. I can't because I, I never watched it. Oh, I thought God. it was, it thought was it like was, the first reality show. Yeah, I thought it was garbage. I didn't really want to pay attention to it. I cannot think of the name of the show right now. But yeah, they they mess it up and no. that. It's about real, real world. world. Yeah. It was real world. Yep. That's what it was. And then that took off and it just spawned 
reality well, it's TV cheaper here. because you yeah. don't even have to i mean all you have to do is just set up a plot there's no script yeah. so it's a plot you act like this you act like this and we'll just film it and and here's your reality show it's not real yeah it's like these uh judge shows the only real judge show was judge, uh, wapner. Was judge wapner every other show since oh, then boy. is scripted if you're watching if you're paying attention when they're blurbing through the credits at the end, you'll catch where it says that the um, that what you just watched is based on a, a real trial, and this has been a reenactment. Mm. So those the judge, the the uh, the audience, the 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 people, the plaintiff, everybody are actors. Yeah, it's a reenactment. It's not actually court TV. And people, you know, most people have no clue. And guys, what, what gets me is like with Judge Judy, the show mm -hmm. plays for the judgment. So the money doesn't come out of the loser's pocket. The show yeah. pays for it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just reality TV is taking over and it's just so lazy. And I, I have seen a few and they can get um, addictive. You go get your hair done and that's all they watch. And it does get addictive. You know, you sit there and you're like, oh, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? But it is it is lazy, though. It's, yeah. it's very lazy. It's no creativity involved. You know, and, and I always say it. We're just a creatively bankrupt society. Yeah. You know, in our music, TV shows, movies, just toys, comics, anything. Just creatively bankrupt. Yeah. Well, you guys said it best. You talked about how the covers of comic books don't have captions anymore, nor thought balloons. No, like, what did you say, LPH? It doesn't give you a reason, LPH. There's no reason to buy the book anymore. It's just, you know, it might look great, but... Yeah. Love yeah. You know, some, of them, some of them have well-done art. Yeah, we did a whole video on that in a discussion yeah. a while back. Some of them right. have nice artwork, but there's, you know, the, the old covers it the layout told a story yeah to try to draw you into the book and these yeah. covers nowadays they don't tell a story and or they're a homage they're a homage or they're a portrait cover and yeah you know so it's like where's the appeal yeah. i don't know nothing about the book makes you want to read it or want to know what's going on here but those older books um, made you say, man, I want to read and see what's going on. Why yeah. is this character here? What are they talking about? You know, lady <laughs> comes up tonight. <laughs> we haven't said lazy that many times, have we? Uh -huh. Aren't we considered reality TV? I don't know. I'm not getting um, paid. So no. <laughs> I want to check. Where's my money? <laughs> <laughs> it's a magic lasso. <laughs> yeah, warrior smurf. <laughs> <laughs> there you are uh, but you yeah you you see a lot of that nowadays mm -hmm. or you know i was um and of course chance is an actor and i almost was because i was on the selection group for um oh what what, what is that one what with john it? cena yeah john cena's reality show the the workout show um, no it's it wasn't a workout true grit true grit true grit yeah yeah season two and but then you know when they when we were in the talks when they called me because i'm like oh yeah you know obstacle courses i'll do that you know and but that's not what they wanted no that is not what they wanted they they wanted a lot of drama and bullshit is what they wanted yeah and they had a script even, it, even though they claimed um that they want to present themselves as being more genuine in season two no. there's nothing genuine about it if you saw season one, <laughs> that was genuine. It was you see better. Season it looked two, better anyway. It was, you could tell. I mean, they, they, they had the girls taking off their clothes, hooking up with the guys. They didn't do none of that in season one. Sneaking under the houses. Yeah. And weird stuff. In season one, they were actually showing them doing the obstacle courses. Season two, you barely saw the obstacle courses. So yeah. it was like, mm, no. <laughs> Hey, I figured out why my image was backwards. I was, I was my fault. I had the mirror thing on. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Sorry, folks. <laughs> it was my fault. 
<laughs> Did you see the new Walking Dead with Michonne and Rick? We Not saw yet. we saw the first episode because the yeah. first episode was free, and I thought it was really. <laughs> I thought it was good. It explained a lot uh -huh. about what happened to Rick when Rick disappeared. Um, oh. It really explained that well because I was feeling kind of bad about that. I was feeling some kind of way because that wasn't his character that they built all those years for him to just disappear and yeah. not come back. So it explained what happened with that, I thought, really well. So if it comes out on DVD, I'll get it to finish watching it because I thought it was good. I don't know if it's going to be good after that, but they did that first episode. Yeah. With... Right. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. You guys know so much about pop culture. That's that's <laughs> why I love watching your we, channel. I learn a we, lot from you. We try. We try. All right, Esmeralda. Thank <laughs> you for coming by and watching. Yeah, well, you know a lot about it as well. Yeah. You're you're pretty ingrained in the in the pop culture yourself. Well, it helps when you read books about things you like. Yes. Oh, you what research? Read people read. I, <laughs> I tease. It's I, I thought I thought all anybody does anymore is this. Yeah. It's just uh, is it like, huh? <laughs> what? Just staring at the screen. They had to have like a like a like a tool. They wear on their hat like this. That's so what the VR know. headset is for. Yeah, well, no, that's <laughs> why. That's why we need the feed. If the you ever feed. saw that TV show, the feed. Did you ever see that show? No, I didn't. It, British television show. I think it only had one season. Yeah. And it's like, um, it follows along with the concept of getting an implant for your phone. So if you don't have the phone. You you can see a, a readout. It you think you see a readout because it's it's plugged into your brain. It's an implant that they put in your head. Yeah. So you can see and hear it. And so, but people, it's just on all the time. And so there's always something scrolling, or they're always watching something in one eye and doing something else in the other, to the point where people are like hyper addicted to it. Yeah, and and, and, um, and if they turned it off, they had these like very violent seizures. The younger the person was, the worse it was. If if they they fall out, if if the uh, connection got interrupted because they're so used to the constant input, they can't function anymore. Mm -hmm. And it oh it um, and that borrows from the new Outer Limits from the nineties. Yeah, there's the episode where everybody is hooked up to the internet through an implant mm -hmm. and no one knows how to do anything. Yeah. They it, can't even read. Yeah. It, if there's something they need to know or do even their daily jobs, then they'll like, uh, you know, turn this like this and they just follow the instructions. They listen like, uh, like, um, navigation in your car mm -hmm. and it tells them, do this, turn this, go there. And he is allergic to um, whatever the fibers are that are part of the implant. So he can't have one. And so he uh, he reads everything he can get. And they all pick on him, pick on him until the system crashes. And then the whole planet is helpless. And he's the only one that knows how to do anything. <laughs> and then uh, that also borrows from the president's analyst. You remember that movie? No. The, uh, with uh, James Colburn. The president's an analyst. It was a comedy in, I think, the '60s. Mm -hmm. And if you do, you remember that film, Chance? Yes. You remember what the plot was? It, mm -hmm. It's very scary. <laughs> the plot was uh, that yeah. the phone company was being used to put an implant in everyone on the planet to control yeah. them. Mm. Very uh, there you go. We'll just you swallow this, and it'll lodge in your in your body, and it will be your telephone. Oh my god! Was the thing, and it's like, yeah, they were thinking of this all the way back in the '60s, because mm. we're getting there. <laughs> it's terrifying. Um, have you guys seen a movie called The Conversation with Gene Hackman, Francis Ford Coppola, Harrison yes. Ford from 1974? Yeah. That's I yeah. Saw that. I saw the that. Study in paranoia, man. All right, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, then. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. He ended up tearing the floorboards out, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I remember that now. 
It reminds me of the Space 1999 with Kano getting a computer put in the back of his head in season one. Remember uh, Guardian of Piri? Oh, well, nobody knows what I'm talking about, but uh, it's kind of like a pre-Matrix plot. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all of that, uh, no, not in like Flint, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was a good series. Yeah. The in like Flint two movies. Yeah. Coburn, James Coburn. James Coburn got around. He was, uh, he was in um, the Mag, wasn't he in the Magnificent Seven? I think so. I think he was. He was the knife thrower, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was in the Fall Guy pilot too, as himself in the very first Fall Guy episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he got around for a while. James Colburn was popular, but there we go. And that was uh, that is our uh, our guest here, Chance, who, again, the main uh, plot of tonight or the main discussion of tonight was that Chance did have a character that he invented himself when he was a wee lad yep. that, he, that he submitted to Marvel in good faith. And yep. Marvel evidently misappropriated, and that would be the character Madcap. Yep. And All you, based uh, on this, now you can see it right the right way up because I was yes. backwards. It's back and, in the tape, folks. The Marvel tryout book was the catalyst for me submitting a character idea to Marvel back in the 1980s. Yes. Mm, mid and early mid 1980s. Sorry. If you were late to the game, you can uh, you can go ahead and watch this on the recap because this yeah. will be saved on YouTube. I don't think they're going to uh, blow me up tonight. Because uh, <laughs> sometimes YouTube gets weird and they do stuff to you as a so-called content creator. Yeah. <laughs> that's their that's their uh, their moniker for for the people that put videos up there. Content, content creators. Creators. I mean, content creators. Yeah, okay. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, we're partners. Yeah, that's that's the ticket. We're partners. You're the little partner, and we're the big partner. <laughs> <laughs> and I love your term. You should you should trademark it, screw tube. <laughs> yeah, they will put the screws to you, and they don't have to tell you why. Because I got in trouble, and Chance knows this. I got in trouble some months ago and tried to find out why and they sent me an excerpt from one from one of their 5000 pages of rules that says that they don't have to tell you why they made a decision about anything and that you have to figure it out and correct it yourself it's like how can i figure it out if i don't know what it is yeah they, <laughs> they don't oh, even man. tell you what video no they don't even is. tell you you got to hit or miss and then they just uh and then they undid it like three months later like nothing happened <laughs> yeah, oh okay i i guess i just uh i guess i better just accept that and count my blessings that they don't do anything else <laughs> yes. wow. Wow. and that's that's my gripe it, well you know there's an old adage how much justice can you afford well not much because <laughs> <laughs> you can't butt heads with uh with YouTube, who is actually Google, who is actually, um, oh, who is it that owns Google? It's something crazy. Like um, Rainbow Corporation, who is actually BlackRock. I it goes, it. yeah, it goes up and up the scale. It's either Vanguard or, or BlackRock, ultimately, is where that ends. But uh, yeah, the Google is owned by an entity that's owned by, I believe, it's BlackRock. Mm. So that's where the marketing uh, orders really come from. I'm probably in trouble just for saying that. Yeah, but, probably hey. on video taken down now. <laughs> oh no! No. <laughs> hey guys, guys, I got in trouble. I do a a little game on my show called Taglines, where I name an advertising tagline, and the mm -hmm. player comes up with the product. And I was talking about fast food and pizzerias, and you remember the expression "Get the door, it's blank." Well, it was yeah. "Get the door, it's Domino's." And the yes. only one I could find, I would reveal the answer by showing the commercial, which was copyright okay. Only one I could find showed a former president whom I won't mention. Oh. And just the audio of that guy's voice, it didn't get me taken down, didn't get me flagged, but they've taken views away, I've noticed. Like, I'll go to bed, and then I'll see the number, take a screenshot, and I'll wake up, and it'll be like 50 less views. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. 
<laughs> I think it's because they're trying to suppress it because I featured a former president yeah. in a Domino's ad. Oh, well. And Hank, you'll have a good time because Chance videos go on for five, six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get better about that. Who has the time? I watch some. <laughs> I don't Chance. Watch them. Oh, this is too long. I but love it you. is good if you going <clears throat> if you work nights because I remember when I worked the midnight shift. I w I used to work twelve hours and I worked from five in the afternoon to five in the morning, and I would listen to talk radio all night long because and 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 that was like years ago. So it wasn't people really on YouTube doing podcasts then, right? Um, so all night long, I would listen to talk radio. I was listening to any and everything. <laughs> just to stay up. Did you like George <laughs> Norrie? George Norrie? No, Did you listen to, him? listen to um um what's that? Um, it was it was this political talk show radio. Um, this political political radio um show because they were the only ones that were on. And it was uh, called Red Eye Radio. That's and it. They, yeah. yeah, they would come on like one o'clock in the morning for truck drivers. They would mm -hmm. come on and they stayed on from like one o'clock in the morning to like five. So I listened to them. And then um, it was this Christian station that came on from 11 to one. 11 at night to one in the morning. Then I would switch to red eye radio because that was the only thing that were on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Hank, you're going to have a good time listening while you're driving your work. I used to listen so to sweet. Larry, Thank you. Larry Glick late, late in the evening, Larry Glick, because he was brought broadcasting out of uh, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. But no, it's Alphabet Incorporated. Yeah, Alphabet. No, no, um, because, uh, YouTube is Google is Alphabet Incorporated mm -hmm. is 26 Holdings Group is then I believe uh, an affiliate of uh, BlackRock. Wow! So it just it 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 did Jay Z chains up through all of these like uh, companies that own <laughs> each other. It's weird. My flock said she screamed for 20 hours for three months. Good lord! How do you stay up? What are you? Uh, that long after a while you gotta be like you must be just reading that's like um a filibus <laughs> yeah <laughs> quick question how high can filled short boxes of i wouldn't stack it no shouldn't, more than about three high yeah it shouldn't be more than three chance yeah Ooh. <laughs> these are long boxes the ceiling, uh -oh. the ceiling long boxes are worse they're stacked up five deep Oh, behind me, these aren't stacked. They're, they're on shelving. There is shelving behind okay. me. So these are the ones on the side are stacked. Mm -hmm. so I, I got to do something about that, but they're not dipping. They're not affecting the books. I'm, I'm real careful, but that's a good okay. point. A good, good trivia question, William. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there we go. But um, with that, because it is, uh, it's almost 9 p.m. where we are, so we've, mm -hmm. we've been uh, running for about two hours. We will go ahead and start wrapping things up. Yeah. So uh, thanks again to our guest for joining us here this evening. Uh, second time Chance has been on, discussing again uh, the loss of his character, Happy, mm. a.k.a. Madcap. And we'll see where that ends up, because there's always the possibility that they could do something theatrical with Madcap. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Or an action figure or something. Mm -hmm. They make an action figure of Mech Happy and get it. <laughs> they are I think they already have a Funko Pop. Oh really? Mac yeah. I oh, think wow. they do. I, I, I've never seen it. That somebody told me that. I don't know if they were really? being uh you know, if they knew what they were talking about, but that's what okay. I was told. That's what I was told. Mm. Wow. But with that, we will go ahead and start signing off. Thank you, everybody who was able to join us here yes. this evening. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got something out of the uh, conversation. And well, thanks to you both for having me on. I want to say oh, that was yeah. really nice. I appreciate you reaching out and uh, for both times. You're good people, and I'm a huge fan of your channel. Keep up yeah, the great work. And please do check out Chance's channel mm -hmm. and check out his podcast if you get the chance. You may find something you like there. Yep. 
And with that, I'll say thank you again to everybody and we'll catch you again.